We've got, I'm going to use this little thing, it was my grandmother's, it's a, it's a back scratcher thing, but it's good for pointing. Right, the concentric magnets, they're at the moment, um, we've got them facing inwards, north, south, north, south, north, south. And all of the magnetic flux in the centre is basically cancelled out. Right, okay. So, when we have an iron bar that goes down the middle, we stick a nail file on the end and there's zero magnetism because everything's cancelled out. <coughs> Think, oh, well that's no good. Okay, right. But, when you have a rotor magnet that's, that's polarised either north or south, let's just go with south, just for state, state, state of simplicity, <coughs> when a rotor magnet passes, um, it normally cuts through the um, coil and generates electricity, doesn't it not? Well, we have another, we have the concentric magnets in between the coil and the rotor. So you think, oh right, okay, this magnetic field is going to be fighting against this magnetic field. Well, not exactly. Because what happens is the south pole is attracting the north pole of the concentric magnets and it's pushing the south pole of the other concentric magnets outwards. So it's actually acting like um, traffic lights on a, a junction and we've got a whole mess of magnetic fields flowing backwards and forwards but the south pole is being pushed and it's that south pole that from the concentric magnets that we want to harvest to generate electricity. And because we're not, because we're not cutting through the actual rotor magnetic field, because we're not actually harvesting that energy, there should be zero slowdown. Actually no loss in RPM. And if it's properly balanced, <coughs> you should be able to push and pull the magnetic fields from the concentric magnet without any loss but there will always be there will always be a fraction a few percent of the rotor magnetism that just get through to the to the bobbin to the coil so we will have a slight drop in rpm it might not be much it might it might be only a few rpm it might be 20 but how can we improve on that well the next stage on my device that I'm planning on building is another is another rotor. At the moment, there's two. There's a bobbin, then there's um, some static concentric magnets which are not being pulsed in the middle, and then there's another iron bar and another coil, and then another rotor. And the problem with that setup is we've got such a long piece of iron going all the way through that we're actually losing the effect of reversing, of having a push-pull across that one coil because we're actually trying to drive two coils so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be sticking two more rotors between on the other side so that when this side, this concentric field south is being pushed on this side it's going to be north that's pulling so that will actually double our power, our voltage and current on that coil and also that other rotor is on one side it's push, pulling on this coil but on the other side of the rotor it's pushing on the other coil. Are we still alive? Is this um Right, are you, are you hearing me? Because I don't know what happened then because um, my preview window just went off.
Right, okay. I've just been explaining stuff. And okay, right. <coughs> You're gonna see the motor behind the motor behind here. I'm just explaining how it works. And when we have a secondary rotors, we're gonna actually gain double input. So I'm gonna I'm gonna run it now anyway. Just move my um, thing out of the way. Get that out of the way. Right, I've got voltage after it's done through the DC rectifiers. These are bridge rectifiers. Oh, you can't see them actually at the moment. Just a minute. So you're going to adjust this a bit. Well, you can't really. I'll lean it forward a bit. Uh, we've got a bunch of DC rectifiers down here which rectify it to DC. Removing, moving the camera a bit. These are all bridge rectifiers. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, and each one of these is for a coil. Well, we're only tapping into one coil at the moment, so those are rectifying it to DC, and the DC goes to that meter. But that meter is very difficult to see because unless I put this little light on to cast a shadow, we should be able to see the needle a little bit. Right, so I'm just going to connect, connect it up and get my wire it's over here. Uh, right, get it going. It turns easily. Right. So we're running up now, this meter's on voltage AC, and I think I'm going to knock a wire or something. Oh, in current, that's why. Yeah, right. Right, we're getting 4.3, it's climbing because I've just put it onto voltage. That other coil is at 4.06 volts, this one's at 4.46, there's 4.46 and 4.07 on that one, AC, and we've got a DC voltage at the moment of 5 volts, right, and the RPM meter is right down here, and it's at 834, let me just get this in a better. I don't know what's happened, it's, it's moved, or we've got light on it, I think it's the light. That's better, 834 RPM. Get it in the right angle so we can see it better. <coughs> right, when I, I'm going to put this meter on to current, and we can watch um, the how many RPMs it drops by. Now the thing to the thing that's important to note is that the, the the motor the power supply to this motor here is currently limited at 90 milliamps, so it can't draw more power because it will simply slow down. Because it, I, I set it to current limited so that we won't draw more than 90 milliamps. Right. So if I put this on current now, we should we should we shouldn't see much of a slowdown. Let's put this on to milliamps. Right, that's now on milliamps. And it's drawing 68.4 milliamps. And we will see a slight slowdown. But that's the a small percentage of the rotor magnetism that's passing directly through the coil. Oh shit, the wire's falling off. Ah! I don't believe it. Hang on a minute. Right. Sorry about that. I, I knocked this wire off. The bloody thing fell off. <coughs> right. Well, it's still drawing 55 milliamps. It's climbing. 57, 58. Now, important to notice that it, because the the lead came off, the RPM dropped to 556. And it was still producing 55 milliamps, which is really good. 
and now we're climbing again we're at 63.5 and the amps are climbing up and you can see the RPM is going up and the other coil on the other the other coil voltage is at 2.86 because when we load one coil down it takes inductance from the iron core that goes right through and it takes energy from the other coil which is what I want to do away with because I, I want to have them separate so that there's a rotor between two concentrics right here so effectively both coils will, be, will have much more energy to dissipate between them right we're back at 66.7 milliamps on AC we're at 730 rpm and it seems to have stabilized at that so I'm going to put this back on voltage 66.7 milliamps I'm going to put this back on voltage <coughs> and we can watch the RPM only climb slightly not very much what's important to note is I, was, I added I <coughs> moved the, concept, the magnets on the rotors much closer to the concentrics a few days ago and I had more iron on the end. Effectively, by having more iron on the end, it was effectively closer. So, <coughs> I actually lost about 300 RPM by doing the same test. So, this, this demonstrates how efficient it is that we don't need much iron. We've only got four, three millimeter um, steel rods on the end of a tiny ring on the end which is basically um, that I'll get this on camera which is basically all that is all on the end I'm going to get it on camera right so I've only got a tiny bit of steel on the end really that is the same as what's on those rotors right now <coughs> so anyway as you can see it's picked up speed now we're at 4.44 volts AC on this one we're at 4.05 volts AC on the other meter now I'm going to put both of them <coughs> onto current My oscilloscope is up there, but you can't see it, but let's not worry about that right now. I'm going to stick this one on current now. I'm going to put load both coils down. That's at um, 200 milliamp range. I'm going to put this one back on current. Now they're both loaded down on milliamps. This is drawing 60.5 60 milliamps, that one's drawing 53.7 milliamps. And as you can see, there's a slowdown in RPM, but not much. Remember, we're only driving this at 90 milliamps. The motor on top is being driven at 90 milliamps, but it's being driven at 9, uh, nine volts. So <coughs> we're actually gaining a lot because we're <coughs> the maximum voltage that we're able to produce on this is a, is a maximum voltage of this five but we're actually generally producing about four and a half but that's only because I'm keeping the RPMs down I'm frightened that I just don't want the rotors to the magnets to fly off and hit me in the face <laughs> but anyway yeah it's 730 RPM versus 830 it's not bad really and we consider we're drawing we're currently drawing equivalent 60 milliamps on this well 59.5 milliamps on this meter on one coil and we're drawing 52.7 milliamps on the other coil and we've only we've only dropped to 711 rpm we've actually got both coils loaded down right now 
and obviously the DC voltage is gone to zero because we're shorting the coils out. So let's stick these both back on AC volts. I've got to move this one because it's in a milliamp socket. Right now they're both back on AC. This meter's not very good at a certain angle. Let's see if that's a bit better. Because we're capturing most of the most of the energy is being created by the um, concentric magnetic field rather than the rotor magnetic field, and those are fixed. So we've got another thing in, and there's another thing that's hap happening right now, and that is that instead of capturing rotational energy, we're capturing more left and right energy which is the seesaw effect which I was talking about which is basically the magnetic field is being pulsed backwards and forwards so we've got sideways motion in the field and it's that force sideways which is having less effect on the rotational speed so we're actually gaining energy from the left and right motion of the field instead of that's why we're not having much of a slowdown I'm just going to go and check the chat on the other computer because I went and muted it. Okay, there's no chat on there. Well, it looks like a few people didn't make it. A friend of mine didn't, wasn't able to make it. But um, currently, at the moment, we've got a DC voltage of 5 volts on this meter here. But it, you can't see it very well. Let's see if I can get this light on it. Don't know if that helps. If I move it, I might pull wires off. <laughs> it probably works better if I get a shadow on the, of the, the needle. But it's about 5 volts, it's on 10 volt range that one. Those little needles are very hard to see. <laughs> oh, I need to get myself 3 digital meters I think, the way things are going. But anyway, we're currently at 4.6 volts on that one AC, we're at 4.45 volts on this meter. And we're at 831 RPM. Yeah, well that's what I'm planning on doing. Um, spherical will probably be the solution because um, using this, this is um, the pattern file which I use. This is for the concentric magnets. This is the pattern file. Now, what we could do, I've got different, I've got different size ball bearings here. We could have, I could try these are soft, these are mild steel, so they're easy enough to drill out. But we could have a concentric, a, a, a round ball on one side of this bar, um, with a, with drilled for the drive shaft, for the, sorry, the, the iron core, which goes to the, the rotor magnets. And when this ball is pulsed, it will force the field on through the concentric across the void and pop out and affect the bo another ball on the other side and that ball will then be drilled out a larger ball possibly actually I was thinking more like um, uh, one of these big 
rubber balls, which are actually mice balls. You can find them in mice. So, <coughs> you know, the old mice, computer mice. So we could have a large one on the other side to capture the concentric magnetic field. Because let's face it, we don't want to use too much energy from the um, rotor. We want to deflect, but we don't want to use too much energy. By having a second ball drilled out, say, big enough, with a big enough hole in it to accommodate about maybe four, three millimeter steel bars or more than that, then we should be able to uh, focus that magnetic field down those rods to the coils. And that is the next step. After I've split this in half and put an extra rotor in there, because the next step it really is the, is the extra rotors. And then thinking about this, because this is this is going to be an engineering job. I'm going to have to get these drilled out. I've got to get these to <coughs> drilled out <coughs> precisely at the engineering firm. So if I try to do this in a vice these things are going to, because they're round, they're going to be very tricky to do. They're going to fly all over the place, you know, probably jump out my visor or whatever, and I'm going to make a mess. So I'm going to get engineers to drill them out. But, um, but I'm surprised because, as I say, I added um, an extra four three millimeter rods on the ends, on each end, and I loaded it down just like I did with this. And I was really disappointed because I lost 300 RPM. Well, the whole point, the whole point really, is not to is not to use the rotor magnet magnetic field to generate power, because when you capture that field, you 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 come into all that. Is it Newton's law and all that rubbish? Of um, because let's face it, motion. Uh, equals energy, whatever, where if you apply a magnetic field to a coil then you're going to exert a force on, on a magnet which gives you either momentum or the other way around if you move a magnet past the coil it generates power. So what we have to do is circumvent that so that instead of the magnet that we're actually using generating the power um, we use that to push another magnet. It's like, this is why I call it a proxy. So we're basically getting um, another magnet to do the generating and we're pushing that field, pushing and pulling it. So, I'm not sure what else I can show you. Because I'm trying to keep this short and sweet, because I know you're a busy person, Z, so... <laughs> oh, and the the forces... Let me just bring the microphone close to the coil. You should be able to hear the audible. Let me just get the... Um, I'll just unmute it, because I, I can't hear what it sounds like. But you should be able to hear the audio from these coils. I think we'll call that I think we'll call that squits for now. Now I want to show you something else though. I'm gonna put both of these on current. I'm gonna put both of them on current and I'm gonna turn it off and we'll watch how long it takes to stop. Let me put this on current first. Right that's on current. This one's on current. 
Right, we're both drawing cones at the moment on these two. And now I'm going to switch the power off. Actually, I'll just connect the motor so we can watch the RPM. Right. On the motor. So power's off to the motor. You can see it slowed down not too quickly, even though they were both loaded down. <coughs> and the DC volts is still at about 3 volts, it's slowly dropping. Can't really see very well. <sighs> so I think I'll stop the stream now, then I can. Otherwise it's going to be too long. So thank you for watching.